Oh, Shalom Aras Tefari. We want to deal with this subject matter, um, and this subject matter is going to be on the Amen, amen. Yes, my brothers and sisters. I want to speak on the connection with Elijah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and with the Black Messiah, with Christ, the Anointed One. That's what we mean when we say Christ in this kingly character, the Anointed One. Many of y'all and many of us have seen certain uh, of, of a mystical or some of the enigmatic connection between Gormawi, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first, Moa Andes is the Emnegede Yehuda, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Shiyume Gziavia, Nagushin Nagesh, Ze Ethiopia, and the Honorable Elijah Mohammed, right, and, and his message to the black man. Now, some say that it's it's very cryptic, too, because, you know, um, though there seems to be some sort of a connection, you know, the real understanding is when we understand the prophetic word, you see, and most of us, uh, you know, so caught up in the politics and men and people that we're forgetting about the real prophetic word. What does the prophetic word say to us, you understand, concerning, you understand, concerning Elijah, and, and we've touched on this before. And perhaps we need to, you know, bring this up again. Let's see if we can, um, let's see if we can bring this up again right here. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's do this right here, right? And this is from the book of Enoch, right? But let's, let, let's show you this right here. You notice something we deal with the name, um, we deal with the name uh, Elijah, right? Elijah. So we have E-L, right? I J A H, right? Right? J A H, right? J A H, right? We have Elijah. Let's see if we can make this a little bit larger right here for so that everyone can see this well, right? The name Elijah, right? The name Elijah, right? Now, if you go to the Hebrew, it's Eliyahu, Eliyahu, right? Which would be more or less written something like this, Eli, excuse me, Eli, Yah, right, Eli, Yah, who, right, um, Eli, Yahu, right, now you find in the Bible, right, in the Bible you find we have Elias in the New Testament, right, and then we also have, um, Eliah, Right, Eliah. Actually, that's that's the one right there, Eliah. Right, Eliah. So the mystical of Elijah, right, and Hila, the Hila and Elijah connection. Right. Remember, there's the book of Eli. You know that book of Eli. We've we've heard about that, and it's one of probably Denzel Washington's um, best um, movies, in some of our opinions. You understand because it's just another way of 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 the earth in a sense trying to swallow that flood you know what I'm saying that flood that comes out of the dragon's mouth right that it may men and people are inspired to put forth these 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 parts of of the prophetic picture you know what I'm saying but we need to be able to to go to the main frame you're you're understanding the word and 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 in spirit and in truth now Elijah, remember this is in, in the Hebrew, right, then the Hebrew is from is from right to left, right? The Hebrew is from right to left. 
Now, the Ethiopic, which is also Afro-Shemitic, as the Hebrew, is actually written now from left to right. There was some change that occurred, right, at some time. It's known that in ancient times it was written like the other Shemitic languages. Remember that the true, the faithful, the covenant Ethiopian people are Shemitic. And so are we. We are really Kamo Shemitic or Hamo Shemitic. This is where there's an African link. You understand with us just like Joseph. Remember Joseph and Joseph's wife, Asenath, right? And Asenath and their children, Ephraim and Manasseh. And there's a very important prophetic connection with Ephraim or Ephraim with the Afar. Uh, linguistically, etymologically, and therefore also now when we understand the, the root of the word, then when we look at the context of the translation, we can get it in even more high definition, right? That, that's why we go to the roots and we study the roots of things and also the contextuality of it. Because we recognize that just like today, we have slangs and we say things today that are new ways of saying it that 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 years ago, People, people would not have understood it, just like people might not understand in the future, but if ones are able to go back in time or look at the records and look at the facts in their context, although we keep speaking about context, the contextuality. Now, when we look at Elijah, which is Elijah, within its root transliteration, and then we put this name here, we have Hila, right? We have Hila. Let's bring this so it'd be on all on one all on one line. Let's um the to this, right? Okay, uh let's go to Silisa. All right, good. All right. So we have Elia equals Hila. Now this might be a little bit um a little more advanced on a certain level. You understand this particular system of uh, transliteration and dealing with the Targum, right? What the Jews would call the Targum, interpretation, but that's their Targum. This is our Targum, right? Targum, right? The translation and interpretation. Now, if you look at what this name means, right? Elijah means that my God is Yah, right? Or my God is the living God, actually, because Yah refers to the living God, or as Rastafari would say, Aya, the Aya, or Ya, the Aya, I-A-H, right? Now, this is Hebrew, right? This is from the Hebraic, and this is from the Ethiopic. And the Ethiopic, or the Ge'ez, is the, one of the parents, we can say, language of the Afro-Shemitic language. And we say Afro, we're speaking about the Kamo, or the Kamite, or the so-called Hamite. And then we're speaking about the Shemitic. Because we do see that coming together of these peoples. You understand? But now, some of the extreme forms of our Hebrew Israelite um, doctrine and the doctrine out there that's in the name of the black Hebrews and the, and the Hebrew Israelites, they create a, or, 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 or they over emphasize and, and, and with the improper context of the real relationship. Now, we know that there is an adversarial, a Hamitic influence. You know what I'm saying? Just like when we look at the slave trade. Let's just bring that up for a moment. We know that it was many of our so-called own um, peoples, right? Many of our own peoples, when we look at this slave trade right here, and, and we just have to set it up like this so ones can understand this a little more, a little more properly right here. Now, from the time of Christ, right, from the time of Christ and the rejection of the Moshiach by the black Hebrews or black Jews led to 70 A.D., right? And 70 A.D., the captivity, and many of the Hebrew Israelites fled into Africa, right? They fled into Africa. Josephus points this out. There's, 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 a, there's much evidence from different perspectives of this. You always... And much of this has been, you know, brought up once again. Now, we know that many of the black Hebrews and the Israelites going from East Africa, the East to the West, many of them had to um, hide their Judaism. You understand? As the Islamic and the Mohammedan 
the overstandardization of Africa increased. And we and we see some very interesting um similarities even in this particular day and time. Now all of this is prophetic. You understand? Know it's pathetic that folks don't recognize just how prophetic this is. You know, so when we look at Africa today, when we look at say Ethiopia today, you understand, know and we look at say Islam or Islamina the Ethiopia Tariq, it is very, very interesting. So when we hear these arguments, you understand, know, of certain um, Mohammedans and, and when we hear Al Shabaab basically saying that now that the priest and the and the and, and the king is dead in Ethiopia, speaking of uh, Paulos and Melis, that Ethiopia will, will fall. We have to recognize what their prophet Muhammad said, that in the last days there will be, what, 73 different sects or denominations of the Islamanah, of, of Islam. And he says that 72 of them will go to the Jahannam Isat or to the Gehenna the Gehenna Isat or, or hell fire. Because he says, leave Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Judeo Christian, leave Ethiopia alone. Ethiopia was the one that that um received the Suhaba of the prophets. You know, was, but now you hear a, a contradictory, a counterfeit story going out there that the one they call Al Najashi. Al Najashi, that was not his name. What they're saying is Nagusi or Nagushi. You understand? Know Nagus in the Arabic. You know what I'm saying? So they don't say the G, the, the, the G as a G. They say Jibrail and so the Gabriel, right? And they don't say, you know, and, and the S is, is she. You understand? So it was a Nagu, she, the king of Ethiopia at that time, one named Arma, right, who we call Arma, who had um, allowed refugee status. They came in as refugees, right, into Ethiopia. But now they are rejoicing, you understand, over Ethiopia's misfortune, and they are claiming that they're going to turn Ethiopia into an Islamic you understand, an Islamic state, you understand, or part of their khalifa. In other words, the, the radical Mohammedans and, and the Islamo-fascists, they also have their own New World Order idea. There's many different peoples and groups of peoples who have their New World Order idea. Everyone is vying for this New World Order, but we know that the real New World Order is in Yeshua HaMoshiach. We know that the real New World Order is in Christ. It's, it's, in, it's in Christ in his kingly character. The Bible tells us that, and as we study and learn and grow and are able to see more and more and recognize and put the picture together and see the full prophetic vision, we see even this present time is so very interesting. You understand when we look at the fact that Libya, right, Libya, Egypt, Ethiopia, you remember Daniel's prophecy? Do you recall Daniel's prophecy? If you think about Daniel's prophecy, he says, And the Ethiopian shall be at his footsteps. You understand that this is at the footsteps right there. But then the prophetic word also says that the real backbone of this whole new world order gets broken in Ethiopia or in that region, in Africa. You know what I'm saying? This is what is so very vital and important for us to understand. So when we're speaking about this prophetic link between um, Elijah, the Honorable Elijah Mohammed, right, who said that we are a great people, that we still have civilized, we, we're not even civilized. He was saying not to go to Africa, or there was no role for us in Africa, but he was saying that, 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 that black people at that time were not what? They were not ready. In other words, we were not, we were not civilized. Right? In other words, we were uncivilized when you really recognize what was going on among black people, you understand, and how we were living in the time of the Honorable, uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. I mean, I mean, I mean even, even look at um, um, uh, Malik al Haj al Shabazz or Malcolm X. Look what he was doing, look how he was living. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and how he was able to recover himself 
by the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we see what happens when he went away from that teaching into some, some, um, some pale red Arab, Wahhabism or Salafism. He went over there thinking that, well, everything that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said was wrong. And what we're learning now, nearly 40 years later, is that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was not wrong, but he was very, very right. You know, when we look at the prophetic level of it, when we look at the scriptural level, in fact, one thing we love about the, the true nation of Islam is that they read and understood the Bible. You understand that they, they, they were not Mohammedan in the sense of those Mohammedans in, in, from the East, those who enslaved many of our people and who seem to be hell-bent on doing that again. But Ethiopia needs to be, for their agenda to be fulfilled, Ethiopia needs to be taken out of the equation. They thought they did it, you understand, in the godless and the fascist the, or, or the creeping coup, the Illuminati coup against Ketamawi Haile Selassie because they were traitors. You know, they were traitors. They opened the door to the enemy. They, they thought it would go one way, but then Ethiopia went into the, uh, the, 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 the communists and the Soviet, the socialist bloc. So one, one time they go towards communism. Now they've gone towards capitalism. You know, many of us say to restore the monarchy, but the base of the monarchy, which is we, needs to be grounded and founded on that rock. You understand? On Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? We are as, as that Rastafari. You understand? And we're speaking about the global Rastafari. You understand? Not just us in the Western Hemisphere, and not only just black peoples. Now, see, a lot of folks are still so caught up on the white man, white man thing. You understand? About what the white man has done. But you have to recognize the white man himself was deceived. You understand? That's why many of those who are coming from under deception are healing Rastafari. You understand? And it's for us as their elder brothers, as the, in a sense like their older siblings, to grow up so we can help to grow them up. So one to ask us about the whole role of the Gentiles. What's the role of the Gentiles in Rastafari? What is that role of the Gentiles? They have a very important prophetically, scripturally, according to the glory of his imperial majesty, right? According to the glory of Ketamawi, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first, Abba, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, our holy father, Yovzen, and in and through our big brother, Yovzen, in and through Yeshua HaMoshi, in spirit, we see my spirituality and in truth. So we're showing you here is the truth that he's a black man. You understand? And yes, it's a lock. Some talk about this whole thing of locks, and we might have to address that again. We had a, 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 a conversation, a reasoning, actually on this very same point, and we might need to clarify that. We might actually post that up there and do like a, as a radio show because sometimes we might not have the opportunity to, you know, always, you know, present a, a kind of word picture. And we might have to just present the audio, the word, the sound, the real power of it, my brothers and sisters, all right? So now, the connection with Elijah, right? Eli, Eliyah, Eliyah, Elijah, because that's what the point of this really is. And some of the other matters we have to address because they touch on and they connect with the fuller full, with the bigger picture. And if you don't have any 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 idea of what the connective, you know, you know, what's really connected with it, then you're not able to really walk freely. You not you don't have that freedom in Yeshua. You understand to maintain that peace of mind. You understand? And to fight the good fight, putting on the full armor in this spiritual warfare. And gaining the victory that's already the victory. You understand? In other words, Yeshua already has the victory. I want to touch on some chakras thing. Chakras and emanation and kind of stuff like that. Because ones have been asking about these things. And it's important that we put a couple of clarifying um, remarks. You understand? Know out there. And then hopefully we'll be able to go into more detail. You understand? Know, ones and ones. Or ones and ones might already know this as well. And all they needed was that um, um, verification. They trusted, and now we're verifying what they already know. 
Now, when we look at this right here, when we talk about the book, right, the book of, um, right, let's go to the book, right, the book of Ellie. I wanted to touch on that, too, from before, right? I want to touch on that, too, the book of Ellie, right? When we, when, when we uh, let's get this right here, the book of Ellie, right? What is, you know what I'm saying, what is, what is the book of, um, you know what I'm saying? What is the book of Ellie? The book of Ellie, is it the book of Elijah? Is it the book of Elijah? Right? The book of Elijah Muhammad? Is that part of the book of Ellie? You understand? Or does that help us understand the fullness of the book of Ellie? Because there are, there are stages. There are stages of growth and, and development. And when we recognize what they are, we can really check our knowledge, check our walk, almost like a checklist, but it's not something we're making up. It's something that is that is as as, as firm as 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 the creator of heaven and earth and the seas and all that is therein. His will for us, his sons and his daughters in this in this perilous time that we're in. Right? So this is some basic knowledge that we need to understand. So what's the book of Ellie? We say the book of Ellie Right is the Metzhaf Kedus of Gurmawi Kedamawi Haila Shalasi of Haila Shalasi is the Haila Shalasi Bible. You understand what we call, and this is a this is a, the, 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 a smaller copy of it right here, the Metzhaf Kedus. Right, and you see it right there. Now it's Metzhaf Kedus. You look at the back of the book. Right. If you look at the back of the book, let's see. It. It's right here again on the back of the book. Now this is a newer copy right here. This is a smaller copy. The the text is um, somewhat smaller right there, but it's a it's an excellent pocket size copy, and it's we have a couple of different sizes as well. This is the Bible of His Majesty. Right. This is this is the Book of Ellie. Right. The Book of Ellie. You you always this is the Book of Ellie. From our Afro Shemitic root. But you see, this, they were able to destroy, they were able to um, abscond and run away with. And when you see that right there in 1962, even though they've been counterfeiting this, you know, they've been counterfeiting it. When we meant by counterfeiting, putting the same um, ISBN on many copies of it, right? And we've, we've ordered sometimes dozens of them for the brothers and sisters looking for them. And then we get to find out that there's this other Bible that some of our people have done some study on and really revealed to us that this is another Bible that's really the Good News Bible that's translated not from any of the ancient languages, but this other Bible they have, which is trying to counterfeit His Majesty's Bible. So this is the Book of Ellie. Actually, is a, is a papal Bible or a Bible that has the, the Good News Bible that they have out there now. You've probably seen it in English and everything. They've actually translated that into the Amharic. And then there's other kind of versions out there, perversions out there. You understand? Trying to sidetrack you, give you, give you wrong code. You understand? Or bad code. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's in the Amharic language, but it's not this book. This is the book of Eli. you right? And this is the book of Haila, of Kedamawi Haila Selassie, who is Moa Andesa the Im and the Geta Yehuda. He is that conquering line, the tribe of Judah, the roots of David. Those are the Ethiopia represents the renewed kingdom of David, the real African Zion. So when we now look at what some uh, who, who are haters of Ethiopia and want to destroy our roots and culture are really about, this is how we know that it's satanic. No matter what kind of shell game they are about, it is satanic. You know what I'm saying? And this is why... On this particular message right here, in fact, um, let us do this right here. Let us uh, let us go to uh, the Bible. Let's go to the scripture right here. All right. There's a couple of points we wanted to make. We just touched on debate, right? We touched on debate, right? Like like why, you know, why we don't debate the truth. You know, you know, we don't debate it. We know it. You know, the truth about Islam and and no debate. The scripture tells us not to. You understand that, that that it makes no sense debating, and, and a lot of this debate is just is foolish. 
if it's about bringing forth evidence, if it's about reasoning, or if it's necessary to argue a point or something like that and to present the facts. But once the facts are there on the table, there's another place in Scripture. I want to go to, to that, but let's go to evidence, right? I think it says evidence, right? I believe it says evidence in, in the King James. There's seven times in the King James that evidence is, is, uh, is here. I think it's in Jeremiah. Let's see right here, Jeremiah. He says, I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witnesses and weighed the money in the balances, right? I subscribed the evidences. Bring that up right there. I subscribed the evidence, right? Subscribe that evidence. We wrote the evidence. This is why the, the new book that we have out and some of the other new books, which are in Amharic and in English, where we can get a translation or good translation. These are books that we're trying to give credit to the others who have written these books so forth and so on, the overs, but the main thing is for us to get this information out there. So I took the evidence of the purchase, okay, which was sealed, right, and according to the law and custom, and that which was open. This connects with the, 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 the book of the seven seals. I want you to understand that in our, in our inheritance. And I gave the evidence, right, of the purchase to who? Baruch. Baruch. Baruch, right, the son of Neriah. The son of uh, Maasia, Maasia, in the sight of Hanamiel, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews, the black Hebrews of that time, of, of Armias' time, right, and that sat in the court of the prison. That sat in the court of the prison. Cause remember, Jeremiah was put into was put into prison. Remember, we touched on the prison, the ten days tried in prison, and also we're in the prison ministry. Yovas and even Alex Jones out there got the prison planet in the way that he's trying to waken people up to a certain level of what's going on out there. And we say you should check out his evening news, and it's it's pretty interesting. Just keep us up to date. But see, you first have to be grounded. Right? We have to really be grounded. Now it says, Thus saith the Lord God of hosts. Right? Yahweh Sabaot. You understand? Which in Revelation is Kedamawi Chayla Shalase. The first power. Right? The power, the God of the hosts, of the Trinity, the God of Israel. The King of Kings of Israel is Garmawi Kedamawi Chayla Shalase. Right? And then it says right here, it says right here, it says, uh, take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase which is sealed, and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen, an earthly vessel, right, an earthly vessel. So it's like this word, the word, sound, and power, and the truth, we have to put within our earthly and our mortal vessels in order to have that token, that deposit there, so that the Holy Spirit, you understand, can illuminate us, you understand, it's like putting money in the bank, can cause more interest. It's what we, we encourage one to study and to read the Bible, or to get even some of these um, 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 uh, CDs, DVDs, uh, audio books of the Bible, you understand, in English, and Amharic, and to spend time listening to it. You understand? To, to play it like music, to listen to the scriptures. You understand? And this is how you begin to, to, your soul now becomes strengthened by this word. You see, when the word is spoken and the word is communicated, it becomes a living word, right? So these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open and put them in an earthen vessel, that means something that we're reading in the scriptures, right? Some things that we're reading right right here in the Metzhav Kedus. You understand? Some things we know, you understand? And some things we don't know. Some things are sealed and some things are open. But we have to put it in our heart and our mind. We have to eat this word. You understand? We have to eat this word. Because remember, the agency of the Holy Spirit must see its deposit in us in order for it to be activated. You, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like you got to have money in the bank. Whether you know what to do with it, whether, it's, uh, you know, whatever, whether you understand the economic system or whatever like that. But you need money in the bank in order for the money to accrue any interest. 
So on a metaphysical level, this is what this, this area of scripture in connection with evidence, when we talk about the book of Eli, the book of Hila, right, and the, and the book of the seven seals, put them in earthen vessel that they make, that they may continue many days. These documents, that they may continue many days. You know, so I highly encourage one to get some of these audio books of the Bible. We have an Amharic one of of the from I think a Jerusalem congregation, and we distribute that and share that with ones and ones. You know, where you can actually listen to readers of the Scripture. You know, we're saying different books in the Scripture and the Bible and the Metzhaf Kedusha of His Majesty, and they utilize the the authorized Haile Selassie the first authorized 1961. Revised and hard Bible. That is the book of the seven seals prophetically, Revelation 5 and 5. And it says here in verse 16 Now, when I had declared the evidence of the purchase to Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed to the Lord, I prayed to Yahweh, to Egeziah, to the sustainer. Right? And let's go forward right here. He prayed, Ah, Adoni. Yahweh, behold, thou hast made, let's just show you this right here so ones can see it for themselves. See, that's Adonai right there, right? And see, that's Yahweh. Or they say Ye Yehovah, but really Yahweh, right? Properly pronounced, right? According to the proper sonics. Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great, what? By thy great power, Koach. You know, vigor, right? And stretched out arm, and the stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing too hard for him, right? And 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 let's see if we can bring up this um picture right here because it's important for one to really understand, right? When we are speaking about Yeshua Hamashiach, and we're speaking the gospel. Because some people, well, they love the fact Christ is black, but then when we deal with the crucifixion issue or we deal with the real, the, the real essence, they cannot eat that. They cannot digest that. You know, and why can not they digest that? So what we want to do is, is, is see if we can pull this up right here, some of the, um, some of the crucifixion um, images right here. Because you have to understand that on the cross, was the stretched out arm, right? On that cross was the stretched out arm. And by his stretched out arms, a new heaven and a new earth was created for us in the kingdom of heaven. But he is that door. You have to understand, he is that door. So when we see the lynching of the black man, that's like a kind of a mockery on, 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 on the old time Roman uh, crucifixion. 